2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. It is that time of week where we speak with Professor John Vachetti. He is Dean of Education at the University of Newcastle and a really interesting topic today, John, with uh, big picture schools. Education is something we all go through. It's not always successful for everybody, traditional education. Yeah, that's right. And good morning. Great to be here. The the real change that we've had perhaps in the last 25 years is we've always sort of gotten away with assuming that if we had about one third of our kids sort of switched on to their future, it was good enough. Maybe one third really on, one third sort of on, and another third floating around. We don't really know what they're go- where they're going. The tricky part in today's society with the automation of most jobs at the low end or the elimination of jobs in the mines and the mills and in the industries that have made Australia such a wealthy country, we really don't have those options for anyone not to find their niche to turn their intellectual curiosity on. And so Big Picture is one of those options that does school a different way. So what kinds of students are ideal for the Big Picture, I I won't say process, but the education system? There was a Grattan report out uh, fairly recently that said about 40% of Australian students in high school are disengaged. That means basically they're going through the motions. Uh, That's a drop in or a drop out. And some of those are our brightest students. Remember, this isn't disadvantaged, it's disengaged. And so the kind of student that gets disengaged and turns off from their own future might stop coming to school or they may be going through school, but they're actually intellectually bored. Some of our students, uh, children of people who are listening right now would say their child is actually just, they're really doing fine, but they're just not getting that extra motivation to really finish school at the top of the game. Well, that sounds like a big call, creating the motivation. Um, How does it work? So Elliot Washner, about 25 years ago, wrote a book, Leaving to Learn, and thought that what if we did school in a different order? You still finish the syllabus, but you do it by starting with your passion. And by starting with your passion, you do an external internship with somebody in the community who's around that topic in any of the disciplines from all of the fields. And then you do a proper research paper and project and report and reflection and put all that together. Now, if you've done that, you've done some writing. It may be in a science, it might be in a mass, it might be in an engineering, could be in a technology, it could be in history. Think of all the disciplines that you might be doing your thing in. Uh, there's going to be something you didn't do. Well, well, now we have to go back and accomplish the curriculum in the order in which you need to have finished it, but having done some of it already through this leaving to learn project in in, an internship that you've done in the field and students are more likely to be interested in the rest of the curriculum because they have something they've just done or they're looking forward to something they're passionate about so the big picture philosophy is really about finding your passion and so they they do actually go to a traditional classroom do they that when they return to their school setting or in schools where it's a school within a school, they're being mentored by a teacher, and they're in that setting where they are then accomplishing the rest of the curriculum. Some of that's done face-to-face, and because of the virtual uh, reality aspects of online learning, they might be taking an advanced subject online that they can accomplish because their timing from it's different. So rather than go through secondary school in the traditional order, they do it all cattywumpkis and all side side down where they do their project, see what's missing, take that, and then leave with the same high school certificate, however, in a different order, and not necessarily with an ATAR or having sat for the HSC. They have that option, but for many of the students, they've come to their passion later in their career, or like some of our students in the Hunter area, they're star athletes on national teams. They may be our next Olympic athletes. They may be students who are doing something external, which is what they're motivated to do. Therefore, they're not really interested in doing the traditional ATAR approach, yet they have all the skills to be successful at uni or wherever they go from there. So are they recognized, these skills, by universities and also by the workforce? So if they don't sit the proper ATAR, university admission becomes where they have to do another pathway. They have to go to TAFE, which is fine, or they might have to do an enabling program or something. However, uh, the University of Newcastle and at least nine other universities in the, in the country have agreed to pilot on a, a portfolio pathway, which allows students to come before the faculty in the degree area of their choice, present a portfolio to say, I believe I've met the qualifications, present that, show their work, 
and then that uh, panel makes a decision on whether they'll be entered directly into that degree or into a degree that could be a feeder to that if they do well. So that's a revolutionary kind of concept to give a new pathway for students who don't go through the traditional means. It doesn't replace the ATAR, it's actually another way to go. And if we think 40% of our students are disengaged, that's not the exception, that's starting to be the rule. And that disengagement can be, if it can be turned into opportunity, those kids will have a great future. And so we have students here this year in their first year at the university who have come through the portfolio pathway. So we have them in our region. They started uh, big picture schools, started in the U.S. about yes. 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But we do have them in our region. Yeah, there's 40 in the country. We have two right in, uh, in our region at Hunter Sports High, as well as at Cooks Hill Campus, which is a subset of Newcastle High School. I can't help thinking of Einstein. He didn't like school either. Yeah, he, he lived to, to, to remind us of that as well. In fact, Einstein would have been put in a special education classroom if he were in schools today. He actually didn't do well in math in school. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this morning. And Professor John Vachetti, who's Dean of Education at Newcastle University. Thank you. On 2NURFM.